Hey everyone, welcome to this weekly Sidereal Astrology forecast for the week of December 21st to the 27th of 2020. All right, so very important week astrologically. We have the great conjunction Jupiter conjunct up to Saturn here on Monday. So really a time of new beginnings. This is a 20-year cycle between these two planets, and both planets do deal with manifestation. And so in this case, how can we manifest things going into what we might consider the new year? or at least this new multi-decade kind of energy with Jupiter and Saturn. Now, this is also the time of the solstice. So if you're in the northern hemisphere, we could say this is the beginning of the new year since uh, it is the lowest energy of the solar cycle and we start to build some momentum moving forward. So Monday, all in all, great time of turning inward, uh, listening to what you do want to manifest for the new year and uh, really build towards with this great conjunction. If you're on the southern hemisphere, this is a great time of doing a status check. How are things going throughout your year? And and what shifts and changes can you make now that you do want to manifest moving forward with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction? Now, on Wednesday, we do have Mars squaring up to Pluto. It is a bit of an intense energy collectively, but we're used to it by now. This is energy that's been going on since August with Mars retrograde this year. So maybe some intense energy collectively, but all in all, it's really good to, first of all, practice non-attachment. How can we uh, pursue our needs and drives and desires with Mars, but also be willing to let go and be non-attached? And it can also be a very empowering part of the week where we could be facing some fears to do things that are more important to us on a deeper uh, desire level. Now, things start to ease up with the square once we get to Thursday onwards, which will be the holidays for those of you who celebrate uh, Christmas around this time. And uh, Mercury will start to trine up to Uranus, followed by the Sun trine Uranus. So Thursday onwards, a bit more of the maybe unique energy, maybe a bit exciting, different, uh, mixing up the routine a bit, maybe with some communications, could be a bit social with Mercury, and uh, going into the weekend, maybe having some fun in ways that are outside of what we would normally do, and again, great for new experiences. All right, so let's take a look at all of this, as well as some of the important things that we have this week, here in more detail when we return. All right, so here is the sky for the week. We are using the visible sky called True Sidereal Astrology on this channel. You will notice a lot of the signs are different from mainstream astrology. For example, they say Mars is in Aries at this time, but if you were to look up at the visible sky, you would see Mars in watery Pisces. So again, if you are new, definitely check out those links down below for more information on True Sidereal Astrology. All right, so before we break down the week, uh, each day of the week here, let's start with the big picture. We did have some recent uh, sign changes last week, so let's go ahead and do a quick recap with the fast movers. So we do have the Sun and Mercury who have recently started to get closer to Sagittarius. And so this is really a contrast to the deeper energy we felt last week around the eclipse. Um, it's still a great week for healing and deep diving, especially with Venus and Scorpio. And where the eclipse started was in a fucus. But nonetheless, uh, moving forward now for about the next month, we do get into a bit more of the post-transformation energy of Sagittarius. Um, this next month uh, is good for expanding our mental horizons, maybe discussing philosophy, higher perspectives, maybe opening our mind to new perspectives is great. And sometimes also expanding our literal horizons could be good for a bit of adventurousness and free-spiritedness uh, moving forward. Now we do have Venus in deep Scorpio. So when it does come to particularly our relationships, I think it is great for deeper connections. Um, this can be a bit of a vulnerable energy with Venus in Scorpio. But nonetheless, connecting in our relationships to maybe build some trust, some deeper connection, some intimacy, and again, connect in terms of deeper values uh, could be a great way of working with this. And of course, Mars is still in Pisces as he has been for a very long time. We could sum it up as the whole uh, second half of 2020. And so when we are taking action with Mars, it is good, very good to be receptive at this time. There's maybe a bit of uncertainty about where we're putting our action and energy. So that, therefore, it is good to be receptive and um, listen and go with the flow as best as we can. <clears throat> and of course, I do want to mention that where we're at in the solar cycle is it was very early last week on Monday, we had the eclipse. And so that was the beginning of the lunar cycle. And now we're in the first quarter phase, which is all about action. So I think coming into the week, it is good for, for taking action towards any new perspectives you've had from about a week ago. 
but to be receptive in the process because the moon will be in Pisces these first three days of the week all the way through Wednesday. And so it is very much going with the flow as we were talking about like with that Mars. So great to early part to, you know, expand those horizons with Sagittarius, right? Listen to that free spirit, expand our mind, our literal horizons, uh, but to be willing to go with the flow, right? Turn inward, listen to that intuition and do things that are more soul and spiritually meaningful for us. Um, I think is a great way, great way of working with this early part of the week. But let's talk about this conjunction. Very important conjunction happens once every roughly 20 years between Jupiter, the planet of expansion, and Saturn, the planet of contraction. And we could sum it up as both of these planets being polarities of each other really are about manifestation. So Jupiter is the part of ourself that manifests by believing something and it becoming true. It's very much the new age kind of perspective which is, you know, uh, feel the abundance, feel what it feels like to manifest what you want to manifest, have a vision of it, and it becomes true. And that is very, you know, true uh, and factual way of manifesting things. But then there's also Saturn, which is the age old way of manifesting. This is about work hard, be patient, put in time and discipline and perseverance towards what you manifest and it will become true. So both of these are valid perspectives. And when they conjoined like this, it really is very powerful for manifestation. How can we believe and manifest through belief? And how can we also work on things and be patient to ground those beliefs into concrete things into our life? So very constructive time. I think, of course, we do want to give it some time for it to manifest. It is a very large cycle, like I was saying, 20 years. Uh, but nonetheless, around this solstice time period, really good to set some intentions in terms of what you want to manifest for the new year, especially because the solstice for the northern hemisphere will be what we could consider the astrological new year. But even those in the southern hemisphere doing this status check in your summertime, see how things are going throughout the year and maybe make some shifts and changes to set some new intentions for manifestation. And with both of these planets going into Capricorn, you know, this is very much about achievement uh, going into this new year of 2021 um, of building towards anything we want to accomplish, anything we want to achieve, right? Saturn sign, building it, right? Accomplishing, um, taking the long road. But Jupiter is going to help expand that, help us see what's possible in terms of what we can build towards uh, moving forward there. So very uh, good way of working with this early part of the, of the uh, week is to turn inward during the solstice see what we can manifest or set some intentions with moving forward now with the great conjunction. All right. So like I was saying, these first few parts of the first few days of the week, still good for receptivity with Pisces. And once we start to get into uh, Wednesday, we do have Mars squaring up to Pluto. So this is a very, usually very collectively intense energy, uh, but it's something we're used to by this time because it's been going on uh, as far back as August 13th when we had the first contact. And then we had the second one on October 9th. And so this is because of Mars's very long transit this year because he went retrograde. So the way we usually feel this though is, you know, Mars is our needs, our desires, and Pluto is the intense energies of life. So it can bring up some of that strong attachment, some of that really wanting to get what we want, pursue what we want, and holding on really tightly to these things as the default. But what Pluto helps us do is strip away all the fals falsities of what we think we want, right? Pluto has this way of stripping away all of the maybe surface ego desires or the things that we're holding on to because we're afraid of something in life. And so it's really good to be non-attached. In other words, to help strip away all of these falsities of, of who we are and what we want. And to, just like with any other deeper energy, to turn inward a bit. Um, and see you know, how we can let go of some things, be a little bit more non-attached, especially with Mars and Pisces, to go with the flow as best as we can, as we were saying. And then it really does unlock the energy. And the energy is very powerful and it could be a great week of taking action and pursuing our needs. But with that conscious intention, with the conscious awareness that once we are more non-attached, then we become more aware of our deeper needs and what we truly want on a deeper level. And in this way, very empowering part of the week, if there's any fears you want to face, any uncomfortable energy that you feel like if you move through, um, you know, can be very empowering for you to, to do, to take some action with, could be very, very empowering part of the week um, and great for setting any intentions of things we do want to pursue that we know might be uncomfortable to do, might require facing some fears to do, but could end up being very transformative for our lives. 
All right, and then once we uh, do get to this, um, you know, Thursday time period, the moon will be shifting out of watery Pisces and into active Aries. Um, and so this kind of eases up some of that square energy and some of that watery energy with Pisces. So I think um, here around this Thursday, Friday time, which will be the uh, Christmas time for those of you who celebrate Christmas, uh, we do have a little bit more of the um, uh, more active and fiery energy. So less of that square energy with Pisces and more of the two fire signs of the sun and Sag and the moon in Aries, getting a little bit more momentum in the lunar cycle with the trine and in this case maybe feeling a little bit more like our true selves a little bit more like taking initiative being independent um, and having new and different experiences especially because uh, mercury will be trining up to uranus as we get into the friday or actually thursday and friday time period which can be great for stimulating our minds a bit maybe some different uh, communications great for a bit of social energy that's outside of our comfort zone Good to just kind of mix things up and be willing to you know have some new and different experiences all right so we might be gaining knowledge information maybe a bit social maybe some new and different communications uh, could be a great way of working with this part of the week and that's really what we could say for the whole weekend because the sun will be trining uranus also through sunday but i do want to mention for the weekend once we start to get into about the saturday time period uh, the moon will be shifting into taurus so whereas Thursday, Friday is good for more of that true self, more of that independence and identity and confidence, perhaps, uh, the theme then shifts towards <clears throat> a little bit more of the grounded elements. Maybe good for connecting to nature, maybe having a good meal, maybe a bit more steady energy, enjoying the material abundances of life, being grateful for what we have in our material life uh, could be great for Saturday and Sunday. All right, but all in all, uh, more momentum by the second half of the week and with the sun trining up to Uranus, also some different experiences, maybe around Sunday a little bit stronger since the sun is more core to our personality. And in this case, maybe about having fun or expressing ourselves or expressing our individual, our individualities a little bit. So playfulness, fun, getting outside that comfort zone, uh, different and new experiences, really the second half of the week, but probably strongest around this Thursday, Friday, and Sunday into Monday time period. And I do want to mention some of these squares we have with Chiron, just as a reminder that, of course, because the solar uh, cycle that started last week, the solar eclipse we had last week, was in a fucus, it still means this whole cycle is about healing. And so I think it's still great this week to maybe do some physical healing, if that's something you've been doing, or spiritual, emotional, or mental healing, right? To face any wounds, to do some inner work, maybe do some shadow work that can help empower us um, and feel more healed and rejuvenated uh, throughout the week. All right, everyone, so that's the week in a nutshell. Most important thing is, of course, this Monday time period, the Great Conjunction, all about manifestation and in the context of accomplishment for the long term with both these planets going into uh, Capricorn and we do have the solstice so great to either start some new beginnings or do a status check with what we want to manifest in our lives we have some watery energy this early part of the week so good to be receptive as possible but still take some action to expand our horizons we do have Mars squaring up to Pluto maybe some intense energy collectively that we can practice more non-attachment with regarding our needs and our desires which helps us connect to the core of what we want which then we can take some action with that can be quite empowering and transformative then that square starts to ease up as we get into the weekend and uh, maybe some new and different uh, experiences communication maybe fun things that are a bit different outside of what we normally do with both of these trines up to uranus and again a little bit more wind in our sails as we come out of the first quarter and get into the more heightened energy here of the lunar cycle all right so everyone have a fantastic week thank you so much for watching be sure to click that like button if you haven't yet um, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel definitely subscribe down below for more videos like this one but everyone have a great week uh, if you're celebrating christmas merry christmas and i'll see you all next time for the next weekly forecast take care